Jody, thanks for being with us today. Of course. Thank you so much. So we've got a real problem here. We had this massive algae bloom down in Utah County and Utah Lake, pretty much covered the whole lake. They're warning everyone to stay away. Very toxic, bad for you. And uh, But now it's spread up into Salt Lake County. We actually saw the notice that uh, the state is asking us to avoid the Jordan River and all canals in the Salt Lake Valley. How did it move so quickly? Well, it really started about Sunday last week. Uh, we got notice and, and, and got our crews out there and sampled and were, were, had much more information by Wednesday. Uh, so, so it began to form, and then by Wednesday, it was it, in Utah Lake, it was, it was, it was huge and it was um, uh, magnanimous, uh, yeah. the largest bloom we've seen. And then, um, and then we had we've been continuous sampling since then. And then uh, we've had a, a joint aerial uh, views of the bloom because the bloom will move and it will sink and it will float, and and so we wanted to get a better picture of where it was so that we could target our sampling. And we saw that it was coming into the Jordan River from Utah Lake. And then we started sampling at Jordan River. And there are a lot of canals that come off of both Utah Lake and the North Jordan River and spread out across the valley. So we started sampling the Jordan River, and we found the elevated levels of the same species of cyanobacteria. And that's when we got the Salt Lake County Health Department involved, the Utah Utah County Health Department is the one who issued the closure for Utah Lake, and then the Salt Lake County Health Department has issued warning signs, warning people uh, that toxic algae is present and that they shouldn't recreate or drink the water. It's also dangerous to animals, so um, not only is it dangerous to us, but it's dangerous to our pets. So this is one of those things, too, that, I mean, they keep, in, they keep mentioning also, and I, I think this is important, too. Uh, people who are listening, the water supply is not what we're talking about. Like the actual in your house coming in through the taps, water supply is not what we're talking about. But the secondary water that's used in a lot of places uh, along the Jordan River, uh, they use that water that comes from Utah Lake. And so that's what they're really talking about, farmers who are irrigating and things of that nature, right? Right, right. Thankfully, it's not in our water supply. That's safe. Uh, it's our secondary water, those uh, waters that come down the canals, and some use it for farming, uh, some use it for um, farming and for livestock, and then others just use it for their lawns and, and their personal gardens. So uh, we're concerned about that. Could it end up? Uh, could it end up in our water supply though? Is there is there a possibility of oh whoops, uh, don't drink the water at some point yeah. happening, or is that just not even a possibility? Not a possibility. Uh, there, these canals that are mentioned, they crisscross the entire Salt Lake Valley. And sometimes you can see them. Sometimes they're buried. They flow underground. Uh, one crosses my property. What are the actual risks to the public in Salt Lake County? Since we're not drinking the water, but it is all kind of all around us, what are the actual risks? What are you concerned about? Where's, where are the, the points of contamination? Um, direct contact. Uh, direct contact with the water. A lot of times, especially with our animals, our pets, they'll, they'll ingest a lot more water than we would, of course, if they're just even recreating in, the, in these canals. Um, and so I would, I, the most harm right now, I would say, to, is to pets, but also to humans if we're uh, watering our lawns, sprinklers, and kids are jumping in and out. Um, the Department of Ag and Food is also concerned about um, being in contact with the water on your lawn uh, after it's been uh, irrigated and also um, just direct contact from the canals. Uh, what about garden vegetables? How do you know if the water you use to water your garden is water that could be contaminated? Well, that's a very good question. There's not a lot of science and information on that, but right now, as I said, the Department of Ag of Food is really looking into this. They could only find a couple of articles, and they're just saying don't use the water. Mm -hmm. We're talking with uh, Jody Gardberg of the uh, Utah Division of Water Quality, talking about the algae bloom that, of course, affected Utah Lake and now uh, Salt Lake County 
canals. And also uh, we saw that Ochre Lake out at daybreak was also shut down because of the water that had flowed into there. And so uh, the idea, one of the things I wanted to know was, Jody, if somebody is experiencing some symptoms uh, and they're going, I wonder if this is uh, related, what would they be experiencing if they maybe had been contaminated or, or you know, consumed it somehow or if a pet did? All right. So typical symptoms are nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, headache, skin rash. Um, you'll the you'll have a there's dermatoxin so that you'll have maybe an allergic reaction or skin rash, uh, gastrointestinal nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and then for really large concentrations for those who are really immersed. Um, you, you, there's much more serious uh, effects, m- respiratory or cardiac. So what we're asking people to do is call the Utah Poison Control if they are having those symptoms and they have been in contact with that water. And the number is 1-800-222-1222. We're also asking pet owners who are concerned about their pets to call their and bring their pets in to the veterinarian. And then we're asking all health professionals that have seen these types of symptoms and the people have been recreating in the last week to also call Utah Poison Control. Uh, do we have any idea when this is going to go away? No. Um, the the do, as I like to say, are the perfect conditions for this to happen are hot temperatures, uh, very calm waters, and nutrients. And uh, they'll, they'll last, we, we think, for about a week. Uh, but what we're doing is continually sampling so that we can give, you, give everyone the latest information of when it will be safe. But for now, I, I would just sit tight, don't drink the water, don't recreate in these waters, especially if you see these advisory signs, um, and uh, and that we will collectively, all the agencies, but the health department, state department, and all the state agencies will collectively make a decision of when it will be safe again. Uh, we've been chatting for the last few minutes with Jody Gardberg, who's an environmental program manager for the Utah Division of Water Quality. She's talking about uh, the canals in, in Salt Lake and the Jordan River being labeled, well, pretty much no-go zones because of this toxic algae. Uh, it's a uh, it's time to go to news, but Jody, I want to ask you for just a little bit of clarification on one thing because we've gotten a bunch of text messages just in the last minute or two. Yeah, a lot of like, what about me? People, what about our neighborhood well, types but, of things? But people yeah. specifically wondering about their garden. So right. uh, what can people do if they're concerned that they've been spraying this water on their garden vegetables? Yeah, how can they find out? How, what, yeah. yeah, how can they find out if they're using a, a water supply that's in danger and then what to do about it? All right, so... Um, the canal companies uh, are, are, it's up to the discretion of the canal companies to deliver the water. So I would contact your canal company of whether or not they're delivering it to begin with. And then after that, I would not have direct contact with this water. If you are using it, try not to be near it or touch it. I don't <laughs> I, I don't know how to express it more than that, um, yeah. at least for now. Um, with the numbers that we're getting, I do think that there would be an effect. And so that was that would be what I would recommend. It's also what the uh, Department of Agriculture and Food is recommending and the State Department of Health. Um, but, the, you know, some some people's livelihoods are dependent on this water, and um, and because the science and research isn't – there isn't enough for us to make these decisions, um, you know, people still can use their water. It's just yeah. don't go near it, don't touch it, don't inhale it. Yeah. Um, a lot of times from spray, from sprinkler systems, there you have that aerosol – spray don't don't breathe that in yeah well it's needless to say it's going to be awkward for a little while all right jody gardberg with the utah division of water quality thank you so much for joining us jody this is thank you so much it's a lot of good information but i feel i do feel bad for a little bit because uh they're still kind of trying to figure it out and exactly who's being affected but you can use your water just don't touch it inhale it be around it 
I didn't know I it's was. It's going to be awkward for you a could, while. Don't breathe your water. That's uh, that's what I got out of this. All right, yeah. news, traffic, and weather right now. We'll come back. More to go on the J-Mac News Show. Stick around.